shortcomings of Mendeleev's periodic table. So, how did it um, provide a solution to this shortcoming? Isotopes, they have different atomic masses, but they have the same atomic number. So, since modern periodic table was based on increasing atomic number, so isotopes could be simply placed in the same slot of the same atomic number, even if their masses are very different. So, due to same atomic number, isotopes could be placed in the same slot. And the third thing was again regarding the atomic masses and modern periodic table again provided a solution with the increasing atomic numbers. So you see how important these, this correction in the periodic table was. That the problem was that atomic masses did not increase in a regular manner. So what did the modern periodic table do? It arranged them in increasing atomic number and by that time I mean uh, most of the elements were discovered. Almost all the elements which are discovered till now were already discovered. And atomic numbers are obviously whole numbers. So we had a whole number assigned for each and every element right from 1 to 118 which are discovered till now. So you don't have any question of uh, regularity in, in uh, increase. I mean uh, they have to increase in a regular, uh, regular manner because it's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can't have 1.5 or 1.75 between 1 and 2. And why atomic masses? Oh, okay. One very important thing. So just let me finish this. Is that atomic numbers are whole numbers. So, and they were discovered, um, I mean, and they were discovered very uh, late, or, I mean all the elements were discovered by then. So all the atomic numbers were right from 1 to 118 can be taken and the periodic table can be made in order of increasing atomic numbers. So that is why it resolved this limitation of Mendeleev periodic table. So one very important thing is that you might be confused why atomic masses are not whole numbers. What are atomic numbers? They are nothing but number of protons and what are atomic masses? They are number of protons plus number of neutrons. So if number if atomic numbers can be integers, whole numbers, then why can't atomic mass be whole number? I mean integer not integer as such, natural numbers. Because they are after all number of protons plus number of neutrons. You can't have one and a half and one point seven five neutron of or the same pro number of protons. They have to be a whole number. So why this atomic mass is not a whole number? It is just due to the fact that there are isotopes. We have just now seen what isotopes are. They have different atomic masses. So 
you can't really say that chlorine is 1735 because there is a chlorine of 1737 also you cannot neglect this chlorine however small it may be however small uh, uh, percentage it may exist in you cannot neglect any isotope because they have a different atomic mass so how can you say that this is the chlorine which uh, whose atomic mass will be taken so that is why what we do is that we have a formula where chlorine 35 into the percentage of chlorine 35 in atmosphere plus chlorine I mean not, not th chlorine as such 35 into the percentage of chlorine 35 in atmosphere plus 37 into percentage of chlorine 37 in atmosphere this divided by 100 will give you the atomic mass or rather we can say atomic weight because now it no longer remains mass it becomes atomic weight it's just a kind of weighted mean you have suppose 75% of chlorine 35 uh, 1735 in the atmosphere so it would be 35 into 75 plus 37 into 25 divided by 100 just a simple thing now so this modern periodic table as it exists now is the uh, I mean what can we say it is the best form of periodic table which can which we can find till now but it also has its disadvantages we will not go into its disadvantages right now and uh, hopefully we'll get a better periodic table than the modern periodic table but right now focusing on the important questions of this chapter of course you have all the theoretical questions of explain the achievements and explain the limitations explain the achievements of Dobereiner's triads limitations achievements of Newland's octaves limitations achievements of periodic table limitations and and so on so these are all theoretical questions you need to just write the points in in the point form but some uh, very i mean very very interesting questions are like can there be any element between hydrogen and helium in the modern periodic table can there be any x between hydrogen and helium so and why so the thing is that hydrogen has an atomic number of 1 and helium has an atomic number of 2. So to get an element between hydrogen and helium you would need an atomic number of 1.5 or 1.7 or, or so on 1.75 or something like that like 1 point something. So can we have an atomic number as such? We can have an atomic weight of 1.5 or 1.75. But we really can't have an atomic number of uh, fractions because it's just the number of protons and you don't take into account isotopes and all because they have the same atomic number, isn't it? So that is why you cannot have any element between hydrogen and helium due to the fact that atomic numbers are whole numbers and hydrogen's atomic number is 1, helium's atomic number is 2. So you cannot have a whole number between 1 and 2. 